Will it machine? That is the question. Okay, just kidding. We're not about to start a series on machining random objects, although we could and that might actually be kind of entertaining, but no, not quite yet. Our support team gets a lot of questions asking about what materials can be machined, materials other than wood, common plastics, and aluminum. So I figured the best way to answer these questions would be to just make a quick video showing it being machined successfully or not so successfully. On the agenda today is EVA foam. EVA foam is a very common material used in packaging, protective padding, floor mats, and a whole bunch more. I bought this sample piece on McMaster in a 2 pound per cubic foot density. So what are the challenges here? Well, the biggest is work holding. You can't really clamp foam, it's too flexible. A vacuum system or downdraft table might work, but unless you plan on processing lots of foam, that's probably not all that practical or cost effective. For a small test like what I'm going to try today, I'm going to just use double-sided tape. Pro tip, if you're going to go this route, stick it to the table and not the foam. You're going to hate your life trying to peel off that backing paper when you can't get a fingernail under it. Also, consider the tackiness of the adhesive on your tape. I'm using Sure Tape DF65 which has an adhesive force of 65 ounces per square inch. I found out later that this was way too aggressive. If you can find a double-sided tape with a rating below 40 ounces per inch, I think that would work a lot better, or you can use masking tape and crazy glue. But moving on to the machining, here I had to find a specialized foam cutting end mill. Since foam is so flexible, you need a razor sharp end mill that will slice through the foam before it can move out of the way. You can get by with general purpose end mills like our 102 and 201, but tools specialized for plastic or foam will work best. I'm going to test two foam cutting end mills today, one is from Amana and one is from Daytron. These will both run you about $60 to $70 a piece. As for speeds and feeds, Amana has readily available charts for their end mills. With Datron, you'll usually need to ask a representative for their tool data. But the common theme between these is high RPM and high feed rate. Here's what that looks like in practice. With the Amana cutter, I'm set to run at 18,000 RPM and 140 inches per minute. Depth of cut will be about 4 millimeters because I'm feeling metric or about 0.16 inches. Amana says you can cut deeper, but you also need to factor in how much you trust your work holding and how fragile the features you want to cut are. I mostly trust my work holding here because the tape I'm using is almost obnoxiously tacky for this application, but I want to hit tighter tolerances on my walls. Foam moves and rebounds after each cut. Lighter passes help combat this. I'll start with a pocketing operation here to make a little cavity in my foam, and I'm using a vacuum here, partly to keep the work area somewhat clean, but also to try and get the stringy bits of foam out of the way. They have a tendency to get wrapped around the cutter. During the contour toolpath that cuts out the shape, you see that happening a little bit more. Overall, the end result is pretty good. It should be noted that my toolpaths here are programmed to cut conventionally. That describes how the tool's cutting edge moves through the material. Conventional cuts start deeper in the meat of the stock and progress towards the outer face. Climb cuts start at the outer face and proceed deeper into the material, almost pulling the cutter along. This is the cutting direction that you're warned to avoid doing on a router table because it's easy to lose control of your workpiece. If you use climb cutting in EVA foam, you get a really nasty edge. I really don't recommend it. Carbide Create defaults to conventional tool pathing, so you don't really need to worry about it here. The Daytron cutter does a similarly good job in EVA foam, maybe ever so slightly better on the quality of the walls. Since it's a 3 flute cutter and not a 2 flute, I can even go faster, and Datron also recommends a higher RPM. But since the HDM maxes out at 200 inches per minute, I won't be able to realize the full theoretical efficiency advantage of this tool. If you're using adhesive work holding and only the top surface of your foam needs to be presentable, I would leave a little bit of an onion skin on the bottom of your part. This way you don't risk getting any adhesive on your cutter, dulling it, and basically eliminating any advantage it has over a cheaper end mill. You can trim off that onion skin with a sharp knife later, no one will be the wiser. So there you have it, EVA foam cut to a very reasonable degree of fit and finish on a CNC router. Anyone can do it, just make sure you have a means to securely hold your foam, you select conventional cutting when making your tool paths, and you employ a sharp cutter that's designed to cut foam. These guidelines apply to all types of foam, like polyurethane and polyethylene. Hope you find these tips useful. Until next time, good luck and have fun machining, folks.